Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. And I say it's alright. <laughs> you saying good morning, Molly? Well, good morning. So in the summertime, every day in the morning, we like to have a little tea in the morning, get our day going. Some people like coffee, and we like tea. <laughs> So if you guys are new around here, my wife and I live in this log cabin that we built ourselves and we've lived here for the last 10 years without any public utilities. We live 100% off rainwater and we're off grid, we don't have any you know, wind power and not even solar power. We are about to hook up some solar power but we've had it sitting here for months and we haven't even started using it yet. So still no solar power, no wind turbines, not a single luxury. We basically live off of a little generator that we use every once in a while and we have found over the last 10 years that we really don't use a lot of electricity. Some of you guys might wonder how we post videos on the internet. We have a smartphone and we just plug it into our truck um, most of the time and that charges it up and we're able to use the internet and everything off of our Wi-Fi connection off of our regular cell phone. Uh, and then we use that onto our laptop and then we upload videos for you guys so you can learn how to live a more self-sufficient and more reliant lifestyle. So today I thought a good topic would be water. I just talked to you guys the other day about some things that you guys got to think about if you're thinking about, you know, leaving the city and leaving all that mess and moving out and, you know, listen. You know? If you want to move out here and enjoy some peace and quiet, find a place that's conducive for your lifestyle that doesn't have a lot of rules and regulations, but then the next thing you're going to want to think about is water. Okay. Now, when we bought our property, this property had no water. Okay. We have a pond in the back here that we stocked with fish once we got here. That was already in. And we utilized that our first couple of years just to keep our garden alive. But there was no water on the property. So when I moved into this property, we were thinking about the different ways we were going to achieve um, getting water here. One thing we didn't do, however, is call the local drill company and ask, hey, you know, we're getting ready to buy this property and we're wondering what's about the average cost because they won't be able to tell you exactly because each well is different depending on how deep they have to go into the ground and every foot that they go deeper into the ground costs you more money. So we didn't do that, but you should. <laughs> so when we got here, we started making those phone calls and we found out that the well to drill in our area, I mean, it was like, 10, 15, could be $20,000. And we were like, whoa, okay, that was uh, kind of a surprise. And then that's, you know, instead of just rolling over and paying the money, we started thinking about alternative ways that we could supply our water needs here on the homestead. So I started doing a lot of investigations and I just, it was pretty obvious, rainwater. And so I started doing a lot of investigation, a lot of learning. That's a lot of this stuff, guys, is learning, digging into the books, you know, experiences other people had, what's been working, what didn't work. And so I really started digging into the information, okay? And then I came up with the rainwater collection system. Now we have a whole playlist if you guys want to learn how to do it. It's a 3,000 gallon system. It's gravity fed from our large barn up front in the ground all the way with pipes, just in case you're not picking it up when I'm putting down, with pipes all the way to the log cabin and we even plumbed it into our new building that we put on the side of it, the learning center. And pretty soon I'll show you guys how all that's going to connect up so we can get water at our sink in there and for the hot shower that we'll utilize during the winter time. In today's video, I'm going to take you guys under the house. Today I'm going to switch out one of my filters and I'm also going to take our filtration 
one step higher. We've been doing pretty good. I mean, we have no problems with our system we have set up now, which I'm gonna show you in a second. But what I wanna show you guys is an added, um, I guess you could say security or precaution, especially if you believe the chemtrails that are going around, just all the metals and heavy metals in the air, these chemtrails lines everywhere in the sky. And you know, we can, thinking about it a lot more lately. And so we wanna just take that extra step to get the purest water possible, all right? So I'm gonna leave this tee on here. Stacy will have to be on the pickup crew while we go underneath the house. I'm gonna show you guys the filters. We're gonna replace a filter. And then I'm gonna show you how we're up in our game on filtration for rainwater. I think you guys can really enjoy it. Now what we have here is a trap door that I've built myself when I built the cabin. Um, Cause I wanted to have a crawl space underneath the cabin because at first that's where we were storing our food that we preserved, we were into canning. And so, uh, you know, I put this little door on here so we can have access underneath the crawl space. Now it was, I brought this ground up out here. So it was a lot lower to get in and out than it is now. But all that grading and everything we've been doing to build the learning center, the ground got raised up, which is good. And uh, it just makes it kind of a little different to get in and out. So that's another thing. If you guys aren't staying agile and frisky, you're gonna have trouble getting in and out of something like this as you get older, okay? So make sure you guys are out there. You're not just hanging out on the couch all day. You get out there, you're stretching out, you're using your body, you're moving. That's one of the biggest problems with as we age is that you guys sit on the couch a lot more and you don't get out there and you do these physical activities and your body starts to shrink and your muscles start to get weak and then you can't bend and you can't do the things that you used to do. So stay active. There's my non-water tip. <laughs> it's kind of tight down here, but I'm going to show you guys what's going on. This is my inlet pipe. When I put the foundation in for the cabin, I actually plumbed in the pipe so I could run the pipes through it once we got everything finished so I could bring the water into the house. So make sure you remember if you're gonna come in through your foundation anywhere, just like we did on the building next door, put some PVC pipe in there so you have that sleeve and you can run through there, okay? So that's my inlet pipe. Comes up to a shut off, okay? So I can shut it off. That's a quick disconnect. So if I never need to take off all these filters, quick disconnect. If you just put PVC pipe into it and then glued it all up and everything, that'd be a mess. First filter is carbon. That's a carbon filter. Second one is a threaded filter. And the next one is a threaded filter. Then it goes out into a T. I have a little valve right there for if I need to get any water down here. Um, we were going to run a shower upstairs. We decided not to do that. So that would have been a continuation up to the shower. And so that's just a spigot spot for right now. Then it goes this way. It's all gravity fed. No pumps, no power, no problem. And it goes right through there and then right up to the sink. Okay. And this right here is just a little piece of insulation. Just helps keep the pipe from freezing. We haven't had any problems freezing underneath the house ever since we lived here. So you wanna make sure that that water's off, okay? These are what the threaded filters look like, okay? Basically it is just what it says. It's like thread and it's on a spool. It's all wound up tightly. And they're different microns, okay? So what you have here is a 4.5 by 10 inch, one micron, okay? That's a one micron filter. Same thing with this one here. One micron, one micron filter, okay? And what I like to do with these uh, filters is I get a bunch of them and I keep them in a, you know, box. Okay, and they're, they come individually wrapped and everything, and I like to keep a lot of them just in case, like what's going on now. I don't want to be ever stuck in a situation where I can't get these filters. Okay, so I keep quite a few of them on hand. And I'll tell you right now, one carbon filter, 
Um, after we put the system in and it ran for a while because obviously there's junk in your system when you first put it together. But now we're probably getting over a year, about a year worth of uh, water usage before we even have to fill, uh, change a carbon filter. And you change the carbon filter faster than you change the Micron threaded filter. This clogs up faster. And the one way you can tell if you need to change your filter is your water slows down, okay? Because it's all gravity fed, so the more sediment and stuff that gets caked on this filter, obviously the less water that can get through it, which means less water at the end of the delivery system. So when you notice that, you know it's time to change your filters, okay? So we got the water off. I keep this little paint tray down here just to keep the water up off the floor, right? A little pressure relief valve right there. Just kind of make sure there's no pressure in the line. And then it just comes right off here, see? been a while. <laughs> See that? I know what I like to do. I'll just stick my arm out the trap door here and relieve this water out of the container. the dirty filter uh, you can't really see it that good but you can just kind of see it's just kind of cakey oh the lighting's just horrible ha! we're in the crawl space what do you want you can kind of see one's a lot lighter than the other see that so that's just all the sediment on there and all the stuff that it's done its job protecting from going through the line so that's good. Well, you can definitely see one's darker and one's like a real light, lighter gray. Sorry for the lighting. This is real time stuff. <laughs> All right, so out with the old, in with the new. But really not that hard to do or anything. I mean, almost anybody could do it. The only problem that I found with these type of filters is that just lining them up back on the threads can be a pretty tricky thing. We've had a lot of problems where I've threaded them on and they would leak and it's you know the whole system just to learn it you know is a little bit of a struggle right because you're not used to any of this stuff you just go to the faucet and turn the thing and it comes out water and it's like wow that's great and you never give it much thought so at first you know there's a few hiccups you're learning stuff you've never done it before but now that we've been doing it for a couple years that's all it's been is a couple years by the way we've been here 10 this is probably our fourth year with water. So for six years, five, six years, we were hauling water in one gallon jugs and five gallon buckets. Talk about dedication, golly. We did that while we were trying to figure out how we were gonna do our water system and you know, we were saving our money. I will tell you this though, the water system that we went with about a third of the cost of a well, and I'm almost pretty sure our water's a hundred times better. <laughs> I know a lot of people with water that come out of the well, and it's very rusty, okay? It's a lot of minerals and iron and stuff in it, and it's not very good quality water, all right? So the filter just goes right inside of here, just like that, see? And then you just screw it back on here. Very carefully because you have to keep that cylinder right in the middle Or you won't get that seal and Don't ask me how I know <laughs> All right Let's see how she goes I'm not kidding either see those jugs right there Stacy saves all of our one gallon jugs just in case the system goes down. We have a way to get more water. <laughs> she, got, she got a little paranoid. We haven't had to use them lately, but one time or two after we had the system together, we did. So now we'll just turn the water back on right here. And then you just want to watch your 
cylinder here and make sure there's no water that's going to drip off on it okay because if you don't have a good seal you'll start to see the water kind of drip in a second right now that cylinder's filling up with water and then going on down the line and i'm going to yell for stacy to turn on the water turn on the water stace And I don't think I've taken you guys underneath the crawl space since way back in the way back days of the channel when we were showing you guys this stuff. Now I'm going to show you guys what we're going to do to get a little better quality water out of this system. Now the water system that I just showed you guys, the carbon filter along with the threaded filters are good for taking out odor, you know, sediment. It's not really made for bacteria, viruses, and stuff like that. Um, we don't have any problems here. We've been drinking the water now and using it for this is like our fourth year. First we started learning from the Amish and they all use cisterns. A lot of them have wells. And then Noah, my friend, an Amish guy, we, he came over and we were actually gonna dig into the ground a cistern uh, like the old timers used to do. You know, Cause I was, I'm real big on trying to do everything like the old timers used to do. So we started to build over where the building is now, the powerhouse or the learning center. And we had about a 10 foot hole Okay, circumference, <laughs> and it was about, we got down about 10 feet, 11 feet, okay? For some reason, I didn't think about it, and you know, I wasn't real keen to this lifestyle. We had just came out of the city, and it's probably like our second year here, we started this project. And we dug it, and all by hand, shovels, the bucket, just like you guys see in the movies. <laughs> and then Noah got busy, because obviously, you know, we're coming out of winter, spring came, um, with spring came, you know, busyness. We have to get our stuff in the ground, then he had to cut hay. And so the project just kind of got put on hold after we got going for a little bit. And lo and behold, the thing started filling up with water. I tried to cover it, uh, pumped it out, pumped the water out. Uh, then I got it kind of dry and I was like, okay, I think we got it. Then it flooded again because we got more rain. And then by this time, I'm kind of seeing like pieces of the foundation, the footing foundation of the log cabin. So. I went into spaz mode, uh, rented a bobcat, filled the hole back in, and then that's when we started looking at rainwater catchment a little differently, right? Started doing some homework, learned about gravity fed systems, learned about, you know, the washing the first flush off the roof, you know, just all the stuff that you have to learn. I uh, did crash courses, did as much studying as I could. Once I had a grasp on it, that's when I started putting together our system. It's 3,000 gallons above ground and we get zero and below and it never freezes and we've had problems with it freezing just a couple times i got those problems all situated so everything out here and your journey as well is going to be trial and error you're going to try stuff something's going to come up that doesn't mean you have to scrap the whole project you just have to make those adjustments so the next year when that stuff comes around then you smooth sail through that maybe something else comes up so then when you do that a couple times your system becomes bulletproof back to the topic of this video <laughs> water purification now if you, some of you guys have been with our channel for quite a while and you've seen us use um, this uh, I can't see it over there it's over there now but it's a, basically a water cylinder that we have inside the house and we fill it up and then we dispense water out of it so we started thinking about it now four years Maybe four years ago, we were a speaker at this conference and we had a lot of people show up to see us. It was the first time we'd ever done a speaking thing. And one of the Homestead homies showed up and we were talking with them at the conference then and we're talking about Berkey's and water filtration systems and all that stuff. And when we got home, they were so sweet, they actually sent us this Berkey, okay? <laughs> that was awesome. We we're totally not expecting it. We were just having this conversation about it and they were really nice folks. So if you're still watching our channel, here it is. We're finally going to break it out. Our mentality was that we were going to kind of hang on to it, you know, maybe for emergencies or something. And I don't know if it's just me or whatever, but I just noticed more, 
activity in the sky. <laughs> and I thought, well, let's pull this thing out and um, get it going. Uh, supposedly, their claim to fame is it takes care of parasites, harmful chemicals, heavy metals, viruses, pathogens, I mean, all that stuff. Waterborne contaminants. 99.99% is what they guarantee and been tested on. They've been out here for a long time making these things. So, you have to believe it's true. Otherwise, they'd be shut down, I would think, right? I know a lot of people with the Berkey water filter system, and they just swear by them. So, Doug and Stacy finally getting to the to the Berkey setup. Now everything here is stainless steel. You guys, I've seen videos on YouTube. You can make these yourself, okay? I mean, you know, figure stuff out. When we show you guys stuff, if you can't afford it, don't kick cans and say, I can't afford it. Try to figure out how to build them. Some things, like the All-American Sun Oven, no matter how hard you try, you're not gonna make it as good as the system that they've put together. I know a lot of people that tried. But something like this, couple stainless steel containers um, you know we have pots and stuff I've seen people do it out of pots so just be creative this is no problem you'll be able to do this easy or you just cut right to the chase and go with the system that's already in place a lot of times you guys are not you guys I'm just saying in general here people say they can't afford things and then they have cell phones and they smoke cigarettes and they go to the movies and they eat out all the time I mean you guys can do a lot more than you think if you just get focused in on what you want to do okay so this is the Berkey water <laughs> Woo! did I slip that in on you all right Berkey water system so basically it's two heavy-duty cartridges that are gonna filter the water and I'm going to put them on now I don't know if I have to bore you with all the clever details and everything but here we go. I also opted for the glass um, container here so you can see how much water is in there. For us, because we drink a lot of water. I mean, I'll go through a gallon, gallon and a half, easy on a hot summer day, two gallons, and some haymakers punch. <laughs> and then in the wintertime, it's probably about a gallon, you know, or so. I don't, you don't not, okay, let me uh, say this correctly. In the winter time, just because it's not hot, you don't stop taking in water, okay? It's very deceiving in the winter time because you don't feel the heat, but you really do dehydrate. In the summertime, you feel the heat, you're sweating, so you're a lot more conscious of your dehydration, so you drink more water, okay? That's kind of what I was getting at. So I wanna make sure I can see how much is in here because this is a kind of a slow process. You basically pour all the water in the top. These filters are super small. They do a really good job and then the water trickles in at the bottom here. Okay, so it's gonna take a little bit of time, especially the first time for us to get this filled up uh, from transferring from here to here. It's all gravity fed. You just pour your water in here, it'll do the rest, but it's gonna take some time. Then once you get this filled up, as you're watching this eyeglass here, then you maybe come over and just add a gallon or something of water to it, and then it's doing the process of draining down into the lower tank, okay? So basically, I'm just whipping this thing out and thought I'd talk today about water and how we're you know, handling our drinking water here and how it's worked for us, and if you guys have questions, you can answer that stuff down below. All right. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, there's a couple of things that you have to screw on. It's really no big deal. So give me a second and I'll get this put together. I'll screw these filters on and we'll take it from there. So it turns out with these filters, you actually have to prime them, okay? They give you this little stopper right here and then you just put this up underneath your faucet at home. And this was the closest faucet with the same basic water. So you just put this little washer on there and it directs the water inside the tube and the water will go inside the tube and work its way out. And once it starts working its way out, then you have it ready to go and then you're supposed to wash it off. And then you can go apply it inside the tank. So I thought maybe you guys might be interested in hearing those directions, I guess you'd say. Stacy's been busy in the garden. I know we haven't showed you guys much gardening videos, but man, the tomatoes are coming on and it's really getting hot. You can see over there some of those zucchinis are suffering a little bit. But 
A lot of heat stress going on in the garden in the middle of summer. This is your transition time. Now is when you're thinking about your fall garden. You're getting your seeds ready. Thinking about next year's garden and getting your seeds ready. Don't wait until next year to get your seeds ready. There's my hot tip for you. All right. Get this on here. Kind of hold her on there and get her going. See that? You can see it getting on there. Here we go. This is what you call priming. We're priming this filter here. That way too, when they make these filters, if there's anything on them, any dust or particles or anything, this will basically get it off for you. From the inside to the out. Once you get it from the inside to the out. Look at that. No water even came out of there. That's how small that stuff is. That's why it works so good. Okay, and then we'll just clean off the outside. Make sure we don't have any contaminants, no dust. Give it one more hurrah through the inside. And you can also see that's how it's gonna work. When that thing is inside the cylinder, the water is gonna come through there and then what comes out is natural, pure, good, free of germs, viruses, and everything else water, okay? I'm going to repeat this on the other one. I don't think you need to see it. And then I'll see you back inside. I said that's kind of the way it worked out there, but actually it's not. It's the reverse. The water will be on the outside of the filter sucking in and then coming out of this location here and into your lower chamber. So it's pretty simple from here on out. You just take, that's another nice thing about this. There's no guesswork and you know, the system's already here. Just put them right inside. There's these pre-done pre holes and everything. Look at that. And you just screw them on down here at the bottom. You guys notice here, there's a hole for four filters, okay? We only got two filters. If you want to get four filters, you can get four filters. If you want three filters, you can get three filters. <laughs> but they come with these plugs in case you only have the two filters that it comes with. Again, it's personal preference and they give you the ability to... It'll probably speed up, is what I'm guessing, the process of getting the water from this chamber to the other chamber. So we'll have to monitor this. If this turns out to be a pain, we'll have to step up and get the other two filters. Because like I said, we drink a lot of water. Goes on there just like that. Then your lid goes on just like that. And you fill the top chamber with water, which we're gonna do right now, so don't go anywhere. But be you know, careful, be slow about it. What happens is you guys get into a rush and, you f and you're filling up this part and you fill this all the way up, okay? And then, you know, you come back and check on it a little bit, it might've went down a little, so you fill it all the way up again. Now you've just thrown it out of whack because this can only handle what's in here, minus a little bit. They probably left you a little space. So if you guys let this go down to here, and then you come back by and you're like, oh, it's halfway done, let's fill it back up, and then you fill it back up. This, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you you're picking up what I'm putting down, you get it? So just kind of pay attention to it. And especially until you get kind of used to it, a couple fills, and then you'll know how fast it is, how slow it is, you know. You get a gauge for it a little better. Let's take it inside and get her filled up. All 
Now, you know, I've seen people just put these right on the counter and everything else. It has like a rubber, a rubber uh, grommet, you know, like a rubber cast, uh, what would you call that? Washer. <laughs> rubber washer here. So you can put it on your counter and stuff. We're going to recycle this old, this is where we used to have the last system on. So we're just going to recycle that and leave it right here. So, you know, it tends, works pretty good. Maybe. <laughs> All right, and then we'll start filling her up with water. Cross your fingers. And then you just fill it right up. Listen to that. Number two, I'd say probably four, four or five of these. I think this is a one gallon teapot, and I think this is a four or five gallon water dealio. All right. Try three, three gallons. Okay. Hear that little thing thumping in there? Thump, 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 thump. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll just try that. See how she rocks out. Put the lid on her here. And listen to it. Well, so there you guys have it. Now you know how we're killing viruses and pathogens and all that stuff in our water here at the off-grid homestead. If you guys are paranoid about your water off-grid, the Berkey water system, I don't have a link for you. I'm not making tons of cash off of selling it to you. We just did our homework on it. We know that it works and you're welcome to go get one. We just want to share the information. Sometimes when you guys come and we talk about a product here, we'll have a link for you. And that'll be a link that me and Stacy will make a million dollars off of. So you guys could be all excited about it or upset about it too. <laughs> I'm just teasing with you guys. Sometimes we have affiliate links and we make a small percentage of the sale. This is not one of those times. A lot of times we just want to bring you guys free information, unbiased. Most of our stuff is, I mean, even if we get someone to send us something, if it's no good, I'm going to tell you guys it's no good. So, But that's how we're going to keep our water virus free and bacteria free and all that stuff. We're going to keep you guys updated on how it works, on filling it and stuff. So try, you know, keep, make sure you're subscribed to our channel. That's for sure. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you get all notifications. A lot of times YouTube just kicks you guys off of our YouTube feed and uh, they just do that on purpose. They're always trying to you know, mix it up for you guys, I guess. Or they don't want you to have this great information. <laughs> so make sure you're always subscribed to our channel. Keep checking back. We'll give you an update on that in a you know week or so after we've been using it for a little while and follow up with it for you. So I got more stuff to do on the homestead. We got the whole day ahead of us. I can kind of see some rain moving in. Maybe there's supposed to be some rain moving in. Stacy's got a pot roast right here in the all-American sun oven. Even when it's cloudy, you know, we're cooking in the sun oven right now, okay? So we'll see you guys on the next video. Leave a comment down below if you ever heard of the Berkey water purification system before. And if you haven't, leave a comment down below and say, I have been enlightened. All right, you guys have a great day. Thanks a lot.